Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Hem Ventures. I'm Morton, LB0 Fox India. And today we're going to do what probably is going to be the final part in my using a nano VNA to measure attenuation uh, video. And what I have here is actually, it's not one adapter, it's two adapters just to get it to the <laughs> uh, required SMA connector in order to measure with a nano VNA. Because ever since I became a ham, I've heard that these adapters does not have a lot of insertion loss. It doesn't really matter if you use an adapter or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the insertion loss through these two adapters. Uh, see what that's like. But furthermore, what happens if we put 20 adapters in line? Does that affect insertion loss? What's the insertion loss across different frequencies using... 20 adapters with variable quality. Um, some of these are good ones, some of these are Chinese ones, some of them are good Chinese ones, bad Chinese ones. Some I've gotten from reputable stores, some I've gotten from other hams. So we get a good combination of 20 adapters here. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna measure attenuation through the set of two adapters. Um, or insertion loss more correctly. We're gonna measure insertion loss with the two adapters here, see what that is like. And then we're gonna measure insertion loss through a link of 20 adapters and see if there's any difference. And uh, yeah, I think there's gonna be some difference. Not really sure how much, but uh, we'll set up the Nano VNA and uh, give it a go. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a couple of barrel connectors on these SMAs because, um, well, I used most of my other adapters on the long chain of 20 adapters. So um, we need to use the barrel connectors here. That's gonna add probably a little bit of insertion loss, but I'm not really sure that this is going to be the culprit on creating a lot of insertion loss. So first of all, let's check the insertion loss on uh, the two B and C adapters here. And then we'll go ahead and check the larger one after that. And I've already set up the Nano VNA. If you want to know how to set up the Nano VNA in order to measure attenuation and insertion loss, I'll leave a link up here to a video that I made. I've actually made two videos on the subject. Uh, one with bandpass filters and one with an antenna switch. So I'm not going to show you once again how to uh, set your nano VNA up, but I do have some videos on it. We got that hooked up to the nano VNA now. So let's go right ahead, turn the nano VNA on. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and we'll see how this looks. And this is how close we get. We've, we've set up the nano VNA to measure between one and uh, uh, 500 megahertz here. So at one megahertz, we have 0 0.01 dB attenuation or insertion loss in this set of adapters. So nothing to write home about. Um, all the way through the HF range, we're at practically no attenuation with these or no insertion loss. Let's move up a little bit, see if we see any differences. Uh, once we get to 300, 400 megahertz, we're getting to 0 0.1, goes a little bit up and down, but around 0 to 0 0.1 dBs of attenuation, all the way to 500 megahertz here. At 500 megahertz, it's 0 0.15. So to conclude, this little dingus does not have much of an insertion loss worth writing home about. But let's check the other one, the huge little adapter chain I got there. Let's check that and see how that is. And as you can see, I need to zoom out quite a bit in order to get this hooked up. But we're going to just hook it up and then we're going to take a look at the Nano VNA afterwards and see what the difference is like and uh, what the attenuation looks like uh, hooking a set of 20 adapters of varying quality uh, in a chain here. I do have a feeling that perhaps we'll have some more attenuation. Let's move it all the way to one megahertz here. And I'm gonna do the same as I did earlier. I'm gonna zoom in on the Nano VNA. And we have the Nano VNA here. Um, let's check the HF range first here. 
At one megahertz, we have 0.04 dB of uh, insertion loss, so nothing to worry about there. 20 megahertz, 0.08, 0.09 at 30 megahertz, so nothing to worry about in the HF bands. Let's move up here to, let's say, 6 meters and see. At 50 megahertz, 0.013, still usable at uh, 6 meters. Let's go up here to uh, 2 meters and see. 2 meters, 0 0.65 dB, a uh, little bit more, nothing to be very worried about if you're in a pinch and you need 20 adapters uh, in line here. Uh, and then let's check uh, the uh, 70 centimeter band. At Let's do it at 435. We're at 1.82 dBs of insertion loss. So a little bit more loss using 20 adapters in a line here. Um, but not as bad as I worried it would be. The largest loss is, let's see here, uh, at 430 megahertz where we have 1.87838485878 dbs of uh, insertion loss. So um, let's conclude a little bit here. So let's do a little bit of a conclusion here now on this uh, adapter measurements we've done here. Um, first of all, um, insertion loss using one or two adapter is nothing you should ever worry about. Um, as I've been told since I started the hobby, Insertion loss using a link of 20 adapters is actually a lot less than I thought it'd be. Um, a little bit, it's fine across the HF range. A um, little bit uh, of loss in two meters. Um, bit more loss on 70 centimeters, but for any of those bands in a pinch, I'd have no use, I'd no doubt using a link of 20 adapters here. If I needed to go from SMA female to SMA female, just ignore the different SMA uh, joints here uh, along the chain here. Um, I, I would be able to use this. Um, should I, however, um, need to do that, I'd probably use a lot less adapters. I'd probably manage to get from where I want to go to where I want to go and let's say three, four, five adapters in that case. And that shouldn't make a noticeable difference. Um, moral of the story though, um, use adapters. Don't be worried about using adapters. It'll work fine. You'll have minimal insertion loss in most cases. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you by any chance watched this far and didn't like the video, thumbs down please so I have something to help me judge if you like the content or not. Uh, do leave a comment down below on what you think about this video. If you disagree with me, if you agree with me, if you've done something like this before, I'd love to know that. Also, um, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, um, and uh, if you like videos like this uh, where I test things like this, I go out, do portable activations, I do product reviews, do consider subscribing. There's a button down below. And while you're down there, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, there is a membership button where you can support the channel a little bit more than just being a subscriber. Both of those are highly appreciated, though. And I guess that's almost all for now. What's left is to say thank you for watching. I'll see you down. I'll see you guys down the bands. I'll see you in my next video. Um, have a nice week. Seven three L.